Empire. You are what you eat, so find the right food. It's a, it's a good time for the space because a lot of the end users and athletes are they're really hungry for it now. People are hungry for it. Even in the youth sports, parents understand the severe importance of it. That's Kush Mahan, CEO of Zone In, who is helping dietitians streamline options for athletes. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. We've heard this story many times here, that the inspiration for fixing a problem in modern sports is based in personal experience. Kush Mahan had trouble with his diet, which more and more we're finding is linked to athletic excellence. So he went about solving it with technology. Our guest this week is Kush Mahan, who is the CEO and founder of Zonin, which is a performance nutrition management platform for sports dietitians and their athletes. So let's talk about what's going inside the body to get the best effort outside of it. Hey, Kush, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Hey, great to meet you, and thanks so much for having me. Um, okay, tell me how you got into this. Why? How did you get into this space to start with? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um to, to cut a long story a little bit short, um, so I'm originally, as you can hear from the accent, it's not, it's not from here. I'm from Zimbabwe originally. I grew up there, played squash, and got recruited to play squash in college. Yeah. And uh, played a little bit, uh, played a little bit professionally afterwards and really, really struggled with my nutrition. It was the biggest barrier to maintaining consistent energy, consistent recovery. And uh, basically after college, I spent a lot of time working in the healthcare world and Using technology as a way to fill gaps in, in how practitioners and providers are able to reach more of their end users. And I did that first and uh, met a healthcare company called Talkspace. It's now the biggest company in the world in the space. And applied a lot of the learnings from that to sports nutrition, which is a space that uh, the athlete space is a space that I've known for a while. And basically use those learnings using smart AI and automation to do so in this space here too, so that every athlete has access to personalized nutrition cells. So let me go back to your experience. Is it because nutrition wasn't taken seriously by the groups you were working with? Like what, what, what was happening? It was, it was definitely, it was definitely the last thing ever really talked about. Uh, you have to train really, really hard. I mean, especially in Zimbabwe and South Africa, if you're going to go and hydrate and drink water in between fitness sessions, you're soft and you, you're, you're, you're not a strong trainer. You shouldn't need to hydrate. And then in college here, I mean, uh, we, we had no resources at all. We didn't have a nutritionist even on the staff at, at the college I went to. Um, what's amazing about that is I I think, you know, that that mentality of fight through it, don't drink, show your toughness. I think that's changed largely here, but it hasn't been that long since it changed. Right. I mean, even here, we we've seen a lot of evidence of that type of attitude about nutrition and, and hydration. Uh, I I could not, I could not agree more. I, I think it's, I think it's changing in certain environments, but a lot of coaches still, as whether we're talking youth college <clears throat> and lower level pro, don't aren't always aren't always on the forefront of thinking about this as a huge priority, even if they realize it's a problem. And that's where we try and come in. Show them why it's a problem if they don't completely get it. And then how do you fix it? Uh, what are solutions you can do to actually address this? Because you can't can't perform train well without being Correctly. Yeah. I, what's amazing too is, and I'm just kind of leaning back on my experience of having been mainly in football locker rooms here for, you know, 20 plus years, but it wasn't that long ago that lunch could be a table full of fast food that was put in front of athletes and largely just explained away as they had just burned off so many calories running around outside for two hours and in a high octane practice that this was fine for them. And I think now it's another piece of the mentality that is not to say they shouldn't ever eat it, but it's, I think, part of the mentality that's kind of changing about nutrition. For sure. For sure. And I couldn't agree more with that. And it's a, it's a good time for the space because 
a lot of the end users and athletes are they're really hungry for it now. People are hungry for it. Even in youth sports, parents understand the severe importance of it. And now it's just about making sure that those things can be addressed, right? Okay, tell me about Zone In. Um, what does it do? So it's a smart mobile app. It's a you. It's an AI and automation based system that works with an athlete's uh, base and understands who is this athlete. What's their what's their age? What's their biometric makeup? Do they have specific dimensions in play as far as this is their weight goal? They're supposed to gain weight while losing body fat percentage. What's their, what are the things that they're allergic to, the foods they like to eat, et cetera. And it uses all this information to build out a daily training, a daily meal plan for them huh. based on their training schedule that day. So they've got an 8 a.m. training schedule and then they've got a 10 p.m. weights randomly that comes up later in the day. The app has to be able to adapt to that whole situation and work with them through that. And so it's a, it's a very heavy automated mobile app with a lot of AI base to recommend an athlete what they should be doing rather than the other side of the coin of athlete comes in and just tracks and logs what they've had with no guidance. Um, and then the dietitian on their side has their own web app that they can use to manage athletes and do so in a far more efficient and effective way. What's interesting here is I've heard a lot of apps. We've, we've featured a lot of uh, technology companies that do a lot of personal training where you could take this to the gym. You could take this to your workouts. If you're a professional and you have this in front of you, it's just kind of an addendum to the people you're working with. I've yet to hear of anything that sounds like a personal dietitian, which is what this sounds like to me. Is, is that what this is? That's exactly what this is. It's uh, the way we like to think of it is, if you are going to, if you've got access to a dietitian and you're going to text them every, and you're going to text them at any time of the day, what should I be doing right now? This should be their response or this would be their response based on their practice and how they would recommend things to you. And the dietitian doesn't need to always be there. Okay. So take me through some of the recommendations that are made. It. It takes you through what are you inputting, what your daily routine is like. And from there, it is then, you know, obviously this is different for a high level athlete as opposed to a run of the mill person who's just working out. So could you kind of take me through how this works? 100%. So we work, we work directly with teams and organizations and their whole training schedule is basically placed into the platform from the beginning. Right, so their their training schedule, their competitions, etc., and from there, a daily meal plan is developed, and tells you what time you should be eating, but then also most importantly, what you specifically should be having based on where you are. So it's using a lot of geolocation technology too in that sense. If you're in the facility, and if you're in the training facility, what's available there, and how much of it should you specifically have for your pre-workout meal? If you're going out to eat for dinner, what restaurant is nearby you, and then what should you exactly have from that restaurant that's healthy, that's going to still align with the meal plan that your dietitian recommends for you and your goals. Does that make sense? So it's a very practical yeah. recommendation engine that we, de <clears throat> that we develop. You can still track it uh, like uh, my fitness pal kind of app, but people don't like doing it. People want to be told what to do. Right. So this is so the 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 previous way this worked was they would give you recommendations and then you'd be on your own and then you'd be logging things in and saying this is what I ate, this is what I didn't eat. This right. is kind of a subtle reminder and a consistent I don't know, recommender of what to do at all times of the day. Correct, 100%. And it's it works dynamically with you. So if you are traveling from one space to another, it picks that up and it's starting to recommend around what's around you there. Or are you going to a hotel that you're staying at for a game? If you missed breakfast, it's starting to work with you through the day to keep you still on track and get those calories and macros in at key times over the day while preventing you from overconsuming during exercise. All right. So it's literally a tool that works through the day with you. All right. Let, let me not get too far in the weeds, but how in the world does your app know what every restaurant has in any one given area? <laughs> so I wouldn't say it's got every single restaurant yeah. that exists, but it has it is a huge database. So we've got a massive database of what's around. The stuff that we don't pick up straight away is 
as an example, um, a small mom and pop shop that doesn't have a website. Right. Or a down- but if you're going to at least a commonplace or a decently commonplace, you're going to Panera, you're going to Chipotle, or you're going to a restaurant that has an online medium, we capture that nutrition information. We've got the nutrition information for the meals there. And if you're going there for dinner, the app is already worked out with your dietitian what you should be having for dinner as far as your macros and your calories. So what from that restaurant should you have? And then secondarily, I assume shopping lists for those who are willing to go to grocery stores and cook their own meals? That's a great question. So we've got shopping lists integrated, but the other practical element that's been, so for for people who want to cook, there's a whole set of recipes and things to have at home that are, again, very, very specific and are working through all these data trees. But on the side of practicality, one thing that's been used a lot is our integration with the likes of an Uber Eats, where you can literally go through our platform to or to build your Uber Eats cart. So you know what you want to order from huh. there. Here are the restaurants that are available, and you can go directly through that system. This episode is brought to you by Onnit. You have goals to become stronger, healthier, and more mindful. And the best way to start is with you. And that's why you use Onnit's Alpha Brain. It's a dietary supplement that helps support cognitive functions like memory, mental speed, and focus. Available in capsules, powder, or a ready-to-drink shot, Alpha Brain comes in various forms, so you're always ready to achieve your flow state. And for something more premium, on its Alpha Brain Black Label features a refined formula that supports attention span, learning, and long-term memory. It also helps you achieve a state of relaxed alertness that lets you zero in on tasks without feeling jittery. A little better every day with Onnit. Go to onnit.com today and enter code SPOTIFY to save cash and find your flow state. This episode is brought to you by delicious bear snacks. Between cryotherapy, goat yoga, and smoothies made with things you can't even pronounce, wellness can feel a bit complicated. But there's a simpler way to wellness. Bear snacks. They're a tasty, crunchy snack made simply of apples. With bear snacks, less is more. Buy Bear Snacks now at most grocery retailers nationwide. Guys, if you're looking for that extra confidence when it's time to have a little bit of fun, let me tell you about BlueChew.com. BlueChew is a unique online service. It delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but it comes in chewable form and it's at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets will help you combat all forms of ED. Plus, it's an online prescription service. No visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is really simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you are approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, and the best part, all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers are going to work with you to find the right ingredient and the strengths for your personal subscription. Plus, their tablets are made in the United States. They prepare, they ship direct, and it's so much cheaper than going through a pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code FUTURE, F-U-T-R, at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code FUTURE, F-U-T-R, to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for being a sponsor of this show. Let me ask you this and, and take out things like allergies and things like that that are obvious that need to be avoided um, yeah. by anyone who's eating. How much variance is there in what we would describe as healthy eating for athletes of all levels? So much. There's, there's, be, there's, if, if you're working across the spectrum of healthy versus recommended, it's a large spectrum, right? There's unhealthy there's, there's a lot of foods that can be labeled as completely unhealthy, such as your fried items or your bad carbs. And then there's a lot of stuff in the middle that's okay to have. But so we are always pushing very, very specific ingredients into our recommendation engines. And also pushing in things that are specific to that athlete's maybe goals of the time. So an injured athlete, as an example, needs a different type of diet, needs an anti-inflammatory diet, and oh. one that's specific to their injury to help boost recovery. It's not just about the ice, the rest, and everything here. What does your body actually need to repair? And 
now if an athlete is injured, it's going to boost that type of ingredient recommendation for them too. Then the dietitian is going to see those ingredients when they're building out their meals or recommending or commenting on what the athletes do. Let me ask you this question. It's probably almost impossible to answer, but like anything, whether it's fitness or diet, compliance and actually listening to the advice is a big part of this whole thing. So you go to a team or an athlete and you get them to use this. You can't guarantee they're going to follow your instructions. So then how do you kind of measure the success of what you're building on behalf of the team, the league or the athlete? The number one thing, especially for elite teams and pro athletes and college athletes too, you you can't make this feel like a work and a burden to me exercise. So the app, you don't need to rebuild the system in a way that requires very, very little engagement to generate success. You look at the platform, you can click a checkbox to say that you viewed a meal plan or let your dietitian know that you have had these items in a couple of seconds. But you can't guarantee that everyone's always going to do it, right? So the success measurement is what percentage of athletes are engaging and versus previous, how much are they engaging compared to what the control was, right? Like most athletes weren't getting this or getting a piece of paper as a meal plan, and it's a standard static thing that never worked with them practically. Um, so what's that measurement look like, and are we boosting that within a team? But the other piece that's huge and has probably been of measurement is how much more can a dietitian do? A dietitian has so many different jobs within an organization. From meal planning and the nutrition services side, often managing the kitchen services, managing menus, et cetera. Can we give them the ability to do this part of their job, which is so, so important, much more efficiently and effectively in the same time that they have? Can they reach a lot more athletes? And that's that's been a huge metric, has been access to effective evidence-based care. So the team dietitian can customize this right? Like this is, they, they can look at this and say, this is how we see diet and nutrition. And therefore these are the recommendations we're using with zone in to help our athletes get where we want to get to. It's exactly that. It's completely customized to the dietitian and to the team. They have their management system and their dashboard okay. to drive what an athlete does on a day-to-day basis. And it's boosting their engagement with their athletes because it's a much more seamless way of interacting and our recent timed trials that we've run to basically compare how's a dietitian previously <clears throat> without zone in versus now, how much more can they do? And it's well over 10x, the number of people they can reach through the system. Yeah, um, uh, I'm joking, but you're not surveilling anybody where if they walk into McDonald's, a buzzer goes off and <laughs> alerts everybody that something's wrong Absolutely. here. We're, not, we're definitely not doing. We're definitely we're definitely not doing. We're definitely not doing that. Yeah. Um, okay. At this juncture, you're just working with high level athletes and teams, right? Like, are you? I would assume you have a broader, you know, uh, goal of reaching normal everyday people. Is that right? Oh, you're completely correct. So at this moment, we're working with across all the pro leagues in uh, whether it's Europe and in the states here. Yeah top D1 colleges, a lot of D2, D3 colleges too, and youth athletes academies. But our next really big goal is to bring this to the the general audience that we would also classify as a high needs population that needs access to a dietitian. And that high needs population can be people who are struggling with certain issues. Is uh, is it obesity? Is it the is it pre-diabetes, diabetes? Is it the individual that just really needs to follow an exercise and diet regimen together in a seamless way. That's our next population that we want to work with. And we're very passionate about that and helping them gain access to the dietitian in their network Yep, to be able to do so. And in general, how do you kind of view the idea of affordability with eating properly that would be for your nutrition? That's a great question. So affordability, I think, I mean, affordability, you're talking about, you're talking about the side of going and buying the right type of items and groceries. Correct. Yeah. I mean, if you're trying to reach, especially marginalized neighborhoods where there are sorts of nutrition issues and they can work within the context of teaching them about sports and how nutrition fits into sports, there is always this barrier, whether it be the 
getting the equipment itself, or in p- this particular case, there is an idea that it's going to be unaffordable to eat this way. It's a fantastic point. So I think that can probably point to a use case here where it, was, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world, right? At the, at the beginning to, to start thinking about how do we make sure this works across the whole spectrum on the, on the economic status. And we worked with a few youth academies that had athletes, especially in New York, from the Bronx, but also athletes from the Upper West Side. And having to make sure that the, uh, the meals that are recommended consistently across the board were healthy and fitting an ingredient criteria that was affordable. And we figured out that it was actually truly possible when actually measuring the dollar amount. It just requires guidance. And it just requires specific ingredient-based guidance for, for across families. Is this usable for a regular average person at this point? Or, or when do you think it will get to that point? Yeah, so we're, we're not direct to consumer. So um, unfortunately, you can't go, you can download the app, but you're not going to have a login. Um, so it's right now it's team by team and organization by organization. Um, and we, we're trying to stick to that base of things right now and not go the direct to consumer route. Kush Mahad is the CEO and the founder of Zonin. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. On the next Future Sport podcast, the next generation of chat technology is here. We oftentimes send back a gif of like a famous player from that team or league waving and saying hi or doing something that would be colloquially them. Trying to interject the language and the spirit of kind of not just sport, but colloquial sport, chat-based sport, which is different than broadcast sport. That's Alex Beckman, founder and CEO of Game On, who is helping streamline chats for fans and leagues and helping monetize the interactions. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein.